All right, so uh, we're gonna replace the front left axle today. I just took off the wheel. I've got jack stands, and I've got backup jack stands here. So I've got four jack stands going. Um, we're gonna do the bolt. We're essentially just gonna take all the brakes completely off. Um, I'm probably just gonna undo this, uh, the ball joint, and down here, so I just have a clean shot, bring it on out, and uh, we're hoping it comes out of there all right without a lot of uh, trouble. Okay, so here is what you are going to need to do an axle swap, front axle swap on the LR3. So let's go over the tools. We need an eight millimeter socket that is for the speed sensor to take the speed sensor off we need a 10 millimeter socket that is to undo where the um, the little bracket that holds down the uh, the, the parking uh, fluid line we need a 13 millimeter uh, socket for the caliper for the brake caliper we need a 15 millimeter socket to take off the back of the, um, to take the, uh, I took the uh, hub, the, the hub off. When you'd use that, it's nice to have this, an extension, so this isn't binding up right next to the CV boot. But if you have an extension and you turn the wheel to the left and right, it gets this away. We also need a 19 millimeter to undo where the uh, steering goes to the knuckle and the top of the um, control arm and the top of and the bolt that goes to the sway bar is a 19 millimeter. With that, you're more than likely going to need a hex five to because that allows you to hold the bolt still so it doesn't turn. And then because you're gonna need that, you're gonna need a 19 millimeter wrench to loosen it up. On top of that, you're gonna need a 21 millimeter to take off the, uh, with the 12 point, take off the caliper brackets. And then you're gonna need a 32 millimeter to take off the wheel hub uh, for the, on the, uh, the big nut that's on the uh, axle. Probably gonna need a pick to pick out all the grime to make sure you can get your hex 5 into those bolts. You're going to need a 50 Torx bit to take off the uh, retaining nut that retains the, uh, the uh, brake rotor on. I like taking the dust shield off. I think, I think it's just easier. There's only five little screws with the 27 Torx. Obviously a ratchet handle. Um, some persuasion, maybe some even bigger persuasion for those nuts uh, to get the uh, old hubs off. Um, fair C clamps to put the uh, brake calipers back so you can get them back on. Uh, breaker bar, um, a longer breaker bar with this is for the lug nuts. Um, this was must have to get that uh, big screw off for the uh, axle. And this is a big help, just makes everything go a lot easier. Needed a slap hammer to get the, remove the uh, axle out of the diff. Again, this was the uh, two and a half, 63 millimeter wide. And I'll show you in a second how I used it. So I just got the big hub off. Uh, this was worth every penny. 32, 12 point. Um, that's all I had, one of 32. Uh, worked fine. Uh, if you notice, there's no, it's not bent in. So I've got a feeling that just, this is not the factory hub. So this might be the second hub job for the uh, this side. Okay, so I'm doing the wheel hubs 
actually just one wheel hub today. I think both of them need done, need a, a replacing. They both, uh, they both wobble when I do the test. Um, when I'm inside driving, more sound comes from uh, the passenger side, the right side. So I'm gonna do that first. I'll probably do the other one next week or so. I just don't wanna uh, be out here all day doing this. So I'm just gonna do one today. Um, first tip I can find is you do need a, uh, a wrench to hold the nut to take off the brakes. Uh, the biggest one I have is 19 and it doesn't fit there. This is skinny enough. It's actually a three inch or six inch uh, wrench, but it's skinny enough. It's a big thing, it's gotta be skinny to be able to fit in there. But again, it's bigger than 19 millimeters. All right, quick tip before you can loosen this. Uh, make sure you don't take off the brackets. You can put a screwdriver right here so you can uh, unscrew this. This is a 50 Torx, and the whole wheel will spin unless you have something to give it some resistance. Well, I'm gonna take off the dust shield, and the reason I'm gonna do that is it took me forever to get off the, uh, the um, disc. Um, I'm gonna use some heat really hit on it with a, with a uh, rubber mallet. Um, I mean, shocking, just, just, just shocking that it just wasn't getting it done. Um, so I think I'm gonna probably have to beat the crap out of this hub to get it off and to be able to get it from both sides. I think by taking, taking the shield off is gonna be easier. Hey, uh, another tip here. Use a uh, wire brush, clean those threads off. Bolts come out a lot easier. Okay, so you need a 15 uh, bolt and, uh, socket head. I think it's a good idea to turn the wheel all the way. You get good access for both. All right, so I got it all cleaned up. I got the hub off. The hub off, the hub actually came off really easy. Uh, again, I think that was the second hub um, on this car. I think taking off the uh, the brake skirt was a lot easier because I was able to hit it on both sides. Uh, so I was a little worried about that. It's going to be hard to get off, but actually that was the easiest thing to come off. I got it out. Actually, it didn't take me that long. Um, I used a slide hammer with the CV joint puller. This was a two and a half, two, two and a half, 63 millimeter wide. And it fits around this part. Sorry, my hand. Fits around this part. So it doesn't go here. Try to, try to wedge some instruments through there. Um, really just put it right here. Um, took a few times to whack it. I uh, had to remove this bolt of the top ball joint and remove the um, sway bar um, so this could move. So now I just need to uh, look at them both. So I do see a rip in this boot. Hopefully that it was my problem. Um, and we're gonna go from there. So there's some other videos on YouTube showing putting uh, something right here and wedging it out uh, big old crowbars or such I didn't find that uh, really useful at all I found that this fits right here and just pulling it out uh, it did take a good 10 15 maybe even 20 probably 15 to maybe 20 uh, really pulls and get them uh, really long uh, so you get a lot of power on that, but this fits right there and uh, pulls it right on out. To get it back in, line it up, you'll feel it, you'll feel the splines go in where it needs to, but you will have to put the bolt back on and give it a little persuasion with a hammer and it will put it back into place. 
Um, but those are the tools you're going to need. So, uh, again, this is the puller to go on. This is the attachment. That's 63 millimeter wide. Worked wonderfully. So it just locks right in there. So that's that's what I did. It took me about five minutes to get it out. So uh, wasn't too bad.